These stories, Simon cooked Thai green curry on Simon's food app, they're pretty cool. And because you can build these into the native uh, experiences that users have in your application, you can publish actions as users use your application. But I think we can do a little bit better. When I cook a recipe, I'm not just cooking a recipe. The recipe is made up of more than just itself. It's made up of ingredients. When I watch a movie or rate a movie, it's not just a movie, it's directed by someone, it's acted in by someone, it's released by a movie studio where it has a particular subject or a genre. So what can we do with those? So in this example, we're going to say that not only do I cook a recipe, but that recipe is made of ingredients. And that allows us to do much better aggregations on timeline and much better newsfeed stories. If you think about Spotify or any other of the music applications, Deezer, Mog, Audio, it's not just the songs I listen to that are important, it's the albums on which those songs are, it's the playlists in which those songs are, or it's the artists who you know, perform the song. And what's important to my identity on Timeline is not just the action of listening to a song, it's the artists, playlists and albums that are really important. And this is how we make that happen. So the first stage of the process is we're going to go back to our application and we're going to add a new object type called ingredient. So we've got recipes and we're going to say that they're made of ingredients. So again, just like previously, here's a bunch of optional properties which for now we're just going to ignore and breeze on through and save our changes. So now we have two object types. We have recipe and we have ingredient. What we're going to do now is tell Facebook to expect that a recipe is made up of several ingredients. So let's go back to the dashboard, go into the recipe object, expand the optional properties, and you can see all the stuff we get here by default. And then there's this button, adding another property. So let's click on that, and we're going to say that the recipe has an additional property of ingredients. We can actually choose that property to be of various different types. It could be an image, a geo point even, date, time, boolean, float, integer. But down here, we can show that it's also an ingredient type. So to expect it to be a type that we've defined here earlier. So we're going to say ingredient. And because it would be really rubbish if a recipe only had one ingredient, we're going to say that it's an array. This is going to tell Facebook to expect an array of ingredients. So let's save those changes. So now we've linked the two things together. We now need to expose some new objects on the web to represent those ingredients. So let's jump over back to Simon's Food app. And here, handily, ready-made, we've got two ingredients, beef, lovely, lovely beef, and pasta. So let's look at um, the markup for beef again. Pretty similar to the markup for uh, a recipe. Again, we have title, description, image, and a URL. But this time, OG colon type. Well, the value for that is Simon's Food App colon ingredient, just what you expect, which tells Facebook this URL represents an ingredient, not a recipe. So just like we did before, we want to make sure that Facebook understands what this is. So we're going to go to developers.facebook.com slash tools, slash debug, and we're going to paste in that URL. We're going to make sure that Facebook understands that this is a, an object that represents beef and that it understands it. And luckily, there's no warnings and no errors. So we know we're good to go. So while we've linked on Facebook's side the concept that an ingredient is uh, a recipe is made up of many ingredients. We now need to do this on the open graph to say that a particular recipe is made up of particular ingredients. So let's look at how to do this with lasagna, which luckily is made of beef and pasta. So let's look at the markup for this, and you'll see that we've added two extra new tags. As well as title, description, image, like we had before, we now have these two new tags, Simon's Food App colon ingredient, and the value is a URL that represents beef. Again, Simon's Food App ingredient and the URL that represents pasta. So now we've said that this recipe, lasagna, is made up of two ingredients, beef and pasta. 
So let's take lasagna and once again, make sure that Facebook understands that. So again, we'll go to the, the debug tool. We'll paste in the URL for lasagna and it'll look like all of the other recipe uh, uh, objects look before. But this time we have two new things down here. Simon's food app colon ingredient, array of length two, and it shows us the two other objects that it's linked to. So now lasagna is linked to beef and pasta, its ingredients. Awesome. So why is that important? Let's show you. If we go back to the Graph API Explorer, and this time we're going to publish an action against lasagna, which is the uh, object that we just updated. If we publish an action against that, let's go and see how this looks in the news feed. First, let's go to my activity log. And up here, it looks basically the same. Simon cooked lasagna on Simon's food app. There's no change. But if we go and look at the news feed view, we've now got ingredient beef and pasta. So the newsfeed story, instead of just saying Simon cooked a recipe, now says Simon cooked a recipe and includes the ingredients that I used, beef and pasta. And they're two new links that I can click on. And they make those newsfeed stories more engaging and drive more traffic to your application. There's just more context around the objects. So that is something that we call object references. It's taking an object and linking it to other objects to provide context around those applications. Now, what this allows us to do is build new types of aggregations, not just the things I've cooked. We can start building aggregations like my favorite ingredients. We can say that Simon's cooked beef more than he's cooked chicken. Uh, imagine if we were doing cuisines. We could say Simon's favorite foods is Thai cut food, not just because he's cooked one Thai green curry and one lasagna and one uh, dim sum. We can say that his favorite cuisine is Asian cuisine because he's cooked Thai green curry and dim sum more than he's cooked lasagna. So object references are really powerful both to build out your newsfeed stories and to improve your aggregations. So that's object references. But what about action references? Sometimes it's not context we want to add to the object. Sometimes it's context we want to add to the action. Maybe where I am or who I'm with or what is the purpose of this uh, recipe that I'm cooking. So that's the example. Let's do that next. So again, what we're going to do in this example is cook a recipe, but this time we're going to cook it for an occasion. So I'm going to create a new object type, occasion, and just like we did before, we're going to accept all the defaults and we're going to skip straight on through to the next stage. And then just like before, there's a bunch I've previously made here. Occasions, birthday. And this is a URL that represents the occasion, birthday. If we look at the source, OG type, again, is Simon's Food App, colon, occasion. And again, to make sure that Facebook understands what that is, just going to copy that URL, and we're going to put it in the debug tool to make sure Facebook understands it. And yes, no errors. It's Simon's Food App occasion exists on the web and a lovely picture that represents it. So now we have to do, uh, we have to tell Facebook to expect that occasion is a property of the action cook. Just like before, we specified that an ingredient was a property of a recipe. Now we're going to specify that occasion is a property of the cook action. So this time we go into the cook action. Again, there's a bunch of optional properties which we'll come back to later, uh, but we can add another property and we're going to say this is an occasion. And just like before, we're going to link it to the occasion object type. We're going to leave all of these things as the default, and we're going to save them. So now we've told Facebook to expect a cook action on a recipe that's made up of ingredients, and to expect or accept an occasion reference property of the action. Now we want to make this look awesome in Newsfeed. So what we're going to do is do a bit of configuration here of the story attachment of how this looks in Newsfeed. We can say for and for a occasion made with ingredients. And all we have to do is specify occasion and recipe.ingredient. 
and that is going to make our newsfeed stories a little more interesting. So let's save that for now. We'll see how that looks in a minute. Let's go back to the Graph Explorer, and this time we're going to cook lasagna, but instead of adding a property of lasagna, let's add a property of the cook action. So again, we add occasion here. Let's go and get the URL that represents occasion. Go back and add that and publish an action to Facebook. You can see we get the action returned. Let's go back and see how this appears in Newsfeed. First on my activity log, Simon cooked lasagna. But this time, if we again look at how this appears in Newsfeed, Simon cooked recipe on Simon's Food App. It was a lasagna for a birthday made with beef and pasta. So Facebook has gone and uh, automatically added and because there were two ingredient objects, but it's added birthday as a property of the cook action. So now the story isn't just that I cooked something, but I know what I cooked, I know what it contained, and I know what it was for. So that's the power of action references and object references.